Well, hi everyone, and welcome to our second short code along lecture. Um, so here we're gonna get into the specifics of profit and how we actually fit the model to some real data and how we generate some forecasts with it. So I'm sure you'll be pleased to know uh, this is a very straightforward process. Indeed, Profit has been designed um, to help everybody build forecasting models easier. So uh, just to give you an idea of where we are, um, if we just open up the uh, Jupyter sidebar here. So we're inside the code along lectures directory and in there, uh, I have opened the code along to live notebook. If you prefer, there's also a solutions notebook that you can follow along in instead of typing the code in with me. So the first thing we've got to do is import the holy trinity of Python data science, NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib. So let's just run that. And then we've got a, our profit specific imports. So uh, all of the profit classes and functions live within the profit namespace. Um, so we're going to import the profit class. Okay, and that's gonna allow us to create forecasters. And then from the profit.plot namespace, we're going to import um, the plot, the functions of plot, plot, the, and plot components plotly. So that's gonna allow us to create some interactive charts with profit, which is quite a useful feature of it. And we'll just check the version, um, and you should be for this course using version one of profit. Now, if you find you're using, for example, version 0 0.7.1, um, which is the version that ships with Colab, um, this code won't work, okay? This, this is the code for the updated version of Profit. However, to fix it, you just need to change it to FB Profit instead of Profit. Okay, that's a little tip in case you find yourself using an older version of Profit with an older interface. So here's our uh, Profit training data function that we created in the previous lecture. I won't go through that again. I'll just run that. And we're gonna load some data and we're gonna pre-process that. We're gonna turn it into a profit training data array. So again, we're gonna load our respiratory admissions by day. Um, so we're gonna read that CSV file from the URL. Uh, we're gonna parse the dates. We know it's in day first format and we want the index column to be date. Uh, and we're gonna set the index's frequency to daily data. And then after that, uh, we pass the data to our profit training data function, this one we've already created, and out pops our nicely formatted training data for profit, and we'll just take a look at the tail of that. And there we go, so here's the, here's the tail going up to um, 2018.07.30, and we've got a DS column and we've got a Y column, so beautiful, the right format that we need for profit. So we've already covered step one in detail. So step two is where we start to get into things. So we need to create a profit object and then we need to call the fit method from that object and pass in our training data. Um, so for example, we could create a model by typing model equals profit um, and run that. And that's created our model for us. Now it's not fitted to any data, but we've got a profit. Uh, model with all the default parameters set. Um, and we can see that profit can take a great number of parameters. So we can change the um, things about yearly seasonality, which is automatically detected, etc., to be uh, false. So we can turn it off. We can change the seasonality mode. We can change some Bayesian parameters um, around priors and MC, MC samples. Uh, but most of this is complicated and most of it is not meant to be touched. So Profit's philosophy is a lot of this is automatically done for you. The bit I would like you to consider is the prediction interval width. Okay, so here by default, 
profit produces an 80% prediction interval. What we're interested in, in this case, is a 95% prediction interval. So we change the interval width to 0 0.95. So we can start typing that in here. Okay, so we've now created our model and that model, when its data is fitted to it, will also generate prediction intervals that are 95% prediction intervals. To fit data, we just call the fit um, method of the model object and into that we pass a data frame that contains our data. Now remember that data frame needs to be in the format that our profit data training function has produced. So we've called that profit train. So let's um, copy that, paste in there and run. So if you're running this on Windows, you may, you may not see this, but this is some information about what Profit is doing in the background. Um, you don't need to worry. What we can see at the end is convergence is detective, detected. That, that means that Profit's been successful in, in fitting a model. Um, we've got this initial log joint probability um, stuff as well, and we've got this Profit Forecaster object here. So if you want to if you want to hide some of that, what we can do is again use our underscore character and run that and it'll, it'll hide some of that information Jupyter Lab is just printing out. We also had some information about profit disabling daily seasonality. If we want to avoid this, we can run profit with daily seasonality equals true to override it. Um, so what it's doing here is it's, it's, it is using daily seasonality, but it's, it's disabled um, hourly seasonality, so time within a day has been disabled. Um, so what we can do to avoid having that info thing there is we could type daily seasonality equals false. Okay, and if I press enter there and run it again, that information, that warning now disappears. So it's not turning off daily seasonality, it's turning off the seasonality within a day so the hourly level type thing, we don't have that data. Um, and to get rid of that annoying warning message, we can, instead of having it automatically detected, we can just say this data doesn't contain any within day seasonality. So that's it. So we fitted our model to our data, okay? So we've now got something called model, an object called model that we can use to forecast. We can make predictions. So there's two steps. The first thing we need to do is call the make future data frame function and specify how far into the future we want to predict. And what that's, well, let's do that actually. So I can show you what that looks like. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, and if I do future.head to start off with, so um, when we run that, it just returns a data frame with a single column, DS, okay? And we can see that that starts off from the very beginning of our data, which is in 2015. If we look at tail, uh, we can see it runs to the 27th of the 8th, um, 08. If we just have a look at profit train dot tail and if we look at the last two entries we can see that's exactly 28 days ahead of where we've got data up to so what uh, profit is planning to do with this data frame is pass it to the predict function and that's going to predict all points it's going to predict um, the points for the for the training data and also for the points in the period that we don't have any data for the bits that we're forecasting. And that's because profit is a regression model. Okay, so we pass all data to it and it produces predictions for us. So the predict function just looks like this, model.predict, and we pass in that future data frame. Copy that. And our, and our prediction is done. Okay, so let's have a let's have a look at that. So if we do 
profit.head, let's have a look at the first two. Uh, profit underscore forecast.head. It's this enormous table. Okay, so what we've got is the DS, the date, and then we've got all the components of that model. So we've got the trend components, um, we've got the weekly components, we've got the yearly components, uh, we've got, we haven't got any multiplicative terms, so they're all zero. And then the Y hat is our final prediction for that date. So remember, profit is an additive model. So it predicts all of these individual components and then it adds them up to get the final value. And you can see with Y hats lower and Y hat upper, these are our prediction intervals. So if you then look at tail, These are the values in the future that we don't have any actual values for at the end of that data frame. Okay, so it's these it's these values that we're interested in using as predictions of the future. So we can visualize all of that rather than looking at this table with some functions that profit provides. So the first one is just called plot. So if we say model.plot and pass in the profit forecast we get this very nice chart. Okay, so this shows us the real data, which is the black dots. Okay, and we can say they stop about here and anything beyond that is a forecast. It shows us the point forecast, the most likely point in the forecast distribution, which is this dark blue line. Okay, so that's the mean of the forecast, the Y hat. And then it shows us our prediction intervals, which in this case are 95% predict prediction intervals in light blue. So remember, a prediction interval is something we would expect a proportion of points to fall into. So for example, for a 95% prediction interval, we would expect around 95% of these black dots to fall within it. Uh, we can use Plotly to help look at this. Okay, so you could use the plot Plotly function, pass in the model and pass in the forecast data frame. And you get an interactive plot. So for example, we could look at the last six months of the data um, and you can see down here, it's, show, it's showing you exactly where you're looking. We can, we can zoom in a bit if we want. Um, so what you can see is profit is producing a fairly simple forecast here with a repeating day of week pattern. And then that shifts slightly by month of the year. You can see that a bit in a bit more detail if we, if we go back. And there is an overall trend as well within the data. So this is quite cool to fiddle about and try and understand what profit is doing with the different components. You can also zoom in on those components with the uh, profits plot components method. And you can, again, it's a method you call that off the model object. And we pass in the forecast data frame. And here we've got three components. We've got the trend. So we can see that uh, there's about one change point in this data. Well, maybe two change points. Um, so we can see there's, there's nearly always an upwards trend. And then a sort of, you know, a few months into 2017, that increased dramatically. Um, and then towards 2018, that perhaps died off just a little bit. So we can see about two change points within our, within our forecast. Um, this is our weekly pattern. Okay, so we can see this is pretty much what we might expect. We can see that it's busiest in the midweek and it tends to drop off um, towards the end of the week. So this is an adjustment. Remember, this is an additive model. So uh, on a Sunday, we subtract 10 patients from the prediction on a wet from the mean prediction on a Wednesday, we add 10 to the prediction. So it's just a component of profit that's added in to get the final number. Uh, and then here is our Fourier series, which represents um, our yearly components, so how it varies by the month of the year, which is constructed via Fourier series. And again, we can we can have a plotly equivalent to that function. 
plot components. Plotly, where we pass the model and the forecast data frame, and and here we can we can zoom in on some of the components to see to see what's going on. Okay, so we can see which month of the year it is, for example, which day of week, and what the exact value is. Uh, so that's all there is to producing a basic forecast with profit. So the steps were, we loaded and pre-processed our data. Okay, we already know how to do that. Then we created a model object and we, we, fit, we fit some data to it in the correct format and we chose the interval width. Uh, and then we did some forecasting. So we made a future data frame and we passed that future data frame to the predict method. And once we did that, we had a data frame that contained all of our in-sample predictions and all of our out-sample predictions. And we could then look at those in different ways with profits, various plotting functions.